So I really don't feel like making this video right now. I just uh, got involved in a very contentious um, social media thread and uh, afterwards a bit of a um, argument with my, with my wife about it. Um, but I'm here, <laughs> I'm here. And I told my wife that we would talk later. Um, and this is probably gonna help me calm down. But see, this is, this is the topic for the day. It's getting consistent with content creation even when we might not feel like it. Because what happens, I've noticed, is that when I allow myself not to make content because I don't feel like it, it tends to strengthen my ability to make really good excuses for not showing up because I didn't feel like it, something happened. I mean, this morning, for example, um, for the first time, uh, we couldn't find our cat. And turned out that she had snuck out last night. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't know. To, so I walked around the block, couldn't find her. My, wa my wife finally took the dog to walk around the block and made the dog sniff every bush. And we found her in one of the bushes and she's okay, thankfully. So it's been a, it's been a weird day thus far. And I really could have just blown up the whole day and says, yeah, this is a really bad day. Uh, I don't feel good at all, so I'm gonna not do it. But I want to <laughs> I want to just hopefully model the fact that even if I'm having a bad day, I'm still here. I'm still here. And um, so let me share with you my, my three motivational ideas for getting consistent with content creation. The first one is really, um, I have three strategies for you. Um, and actually, I, I hope you'll either read the blog post and check out the third strategy um, or wait until the end to hear about the third strategy. So the first strategy is, it's, it's really a mindfulness uh, practice, okay? Just like literally what's happening with me right now is I really don't wanna be doing this right now. I really don't. but. I'm going to go live on Facebook. I know that's a little crazy and not maybe, not maybe a big extreme. And some of you might not be ready at that point to do this, but I've done so much content now that I can do this, even though I'm in a really bad mood, I, I press live and go live on Facebook. And I can basically um, remember that all of you watching this don't know what I'm going through, but you are here for the content. Right. So the first thing is a mindfulness practice to say, can I show up not being worried, not not being concerned about perfectionism, but being more concerned about the practice of creating again and again and again? Because with practice, like I said, now I'm in a state where it doesn't matter how bad of a mood I'm in. I can click live and go on Facebook and still communicate the message that I came here to communicate. So it's like. It's, that came with a lot of practice. That came with a lot of muscle building. And I'm sure after doing this, I'll feel much better and my conversation with my wife will go better and et cetera, et cetera, right? So in, in, in other words, creating content actually does help uh, hopefully lift our moods, especially when we're, um, when we're in service and when we're in exploration of our ideas, et cetera. So the first strategy really is to understand that this is a mindfulness practice. It is almost a spiritual practice to create content especially when we're not feeling up to it. So that's strategy number one. Strategy number two, uh, and I got so distracted that I, I have to look at my notes here. Okay, so strategy number two is to publish in stages. So this is the way I think about content. Everything that I put, every, every idea that I have that I put out there for the first time. Now again, when I say I, idea that I have, it's not that I came up with it necessarily, but somehow, through reading many things, talking to many people, some idea form that I wanna share with you. But whatever, whatever thing that I publish for the first time, whatever article I put out for the first time, whatever video I save for the first time, I think of that as very much an experiment. And in fact, every time I create content, to me it's an experiment. Experiment what? Experiment to see how I can do better for the next time. So I'm always already thinking about the next time. I don't think of this as, oh my God, this has got to be good. This has got to reach a lot of people. This is better bringing me clients or whatever. No, I don't think any of that. I think, oh, this is an experiment in exploring my thoughts in aiming to serve others with something that might help them and, and seeing what the reactions end up being so that I can maybe, if, if there are enough 
uh, engagement with any one piece, if people really find it helpful, then I'll take it to the next step. The next, maybe a few months later, I'll, I'll spend more time working on it and, um, uh, you know, making it better, adding another example or, or, you know, uh, cutting out some things that are less necessary and republishing again. So I think of content, again, I think of content in stages. The first time I put an idea out there, I put it out as quickly as possible. Like I said, even when I'm angry, I'm, I'm here on this Facebook Live because this is the first time I'm talking about these three motivational ideas for creating content in, in this format. And so I put it out there for the first time and then if, if, it, if it resonates with people, then I'll, I'll mark it for a few months later to come back and see if I can improve on that idea you know, add more examples or say it in a, in a different way and then do it again. And then, and then again, and again, and the same thing with my courses, with my online courses, every time I put it out for the first time, I know, Hey, this is not going to be the best course ever. This is going to be what I can do right now with however many hours I gave myself to prepare. This is what I've got for you. Okay. And once I teach it, then I know that, okay, one or two years later, I'm going to reteach it again. But a, a couple years later, I already have that material I prepared and now I'm going to make it even better. So I always think of content in stages and it never ends. It never, there is never an ending most perfect piece of content. It's always, ah, I know I'm just going to put it out there with whatever effort I, I have time to put in. So for example, in writing a blog post, I only give myself one hour to write a blog post, just one hour, whatever I can do in that one hour, that's what you see. That's it. That's what you get to see. And even, even if occasionally I have typos or my, I'm, I'm sure if I spend another five to seven hours, I can make it even better. But that's the point is that, and maybe, maybe you don't realize this, content is uh, the topic matters more than how well you write. The topic matters more than how well you speak. That's what I've learned over publishing a thousand pieces of article, a thousand articles, a thousand videos. It's it's not about how good the video was or how well written the article was. It's really about the topic. Did I, did I frame the topic in a way that people understand and that they really either resonate with or can really learn from? So if the topic is good, I know that no matter how bad it is, spending one hour, put it out there. If the topic is good, it's going to get a lot of traction and I'll mark it for future improvement, future development. So I give myself one hour, put the blog post out there, and the next time I come around to it a few months later, if it's worth doing, I'll spend another hour to improve it and then put it out again. So you see, I think of content in stages. So maybe that'll help you as well. Don't, don't be so perfectionist. Just put it out there. Get into a rhythm of content. So that's the second strategy. The first one was think of it as a mindfulness practice of showing up even when I don't feel like it, on schedule, et cetera. The second one was think of it in stages so that don't, don't be perfectionist. You just put it out and then in the future you can improve upon it if it got traction, some traction, above average traction compared to what you usually put out there. And the third idea that I have for you, I'm kind of excited about because I'm, I'm just introducing this um, to you all for the first time. And um, I wanna thank one of my clients for kind of sparking the idea. Clara Moisello, Mo thank you so much for sparking this idea. Uh, she's one of the members of my Master Heart Business Group. And here's the idea. Um, the idea is to do content co-working. So here's what I mean. Get together with another friend who wants to create content. So find a friend who also wants to blog or who wants to make videos, okay? Get together with them for one hour. And this is what you do in that one hour. You meet via Zoom. And first, for the first 10 minutes, split up the first 10 minutes, each of you will basically talk for five minutes about what you want to blog about or make a video about. So just kind of like get the, uh, you know, get, get the, get the juices going of just, you know, kind of, even if it's random thoughts, you know, just speak for five minutes about what you probably want to blog about or, or make a video about um, during, during that session with your, with your partner. Okay. So each of you spend five minutes and then after the first 10 minutes is over, then you record the session and now you go ahead and speak the actual video content for five to 10 minutes. Now, if you don't want to make a video, you're not ready for that. That's okay. But you're still doing a second take, you know what I mean? A second take to speak it out because later uh, what, what I'll sh um, share with you and, and have you do 
And in fact, I can, before you start recording, uh, before you start speaking that second time, you might want to open a Google document. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you see on my screen, a Google document, just open a new Google document and click on tools and click on voice typing. And then you might have to give the computer access to say, yes, please record my voice. And then click on this uh, microphone button and then just start speaking. And you'll notice if you're just speaking, right, your friend is there listening to you, um, supporting you as you speak your content. Again, this is the second time. Remember the first 10 minutes of the hour, you split it up just to kind of randomly talk and try to just, you know, kind of draft speaking. And then after the first 10 minutes, you then each of you record for five or 10 minutes speaking the actual content. Hopefully you've turned on Google Voice, Google Doc voice typing first. And as you can see, this is happening in real time. All this is happening in real time. I'm not doing any typing right now. It's, um, well, I don't know what, what just happened. I think I highlighted that and that somehow uh, duplicated this. But, um, uh, but see, anyway, Google voice typing, uh, it's pretty cool. And, and, and the point is that it's not going to be perfect, which is why after you each record for five or 10 minutes of speaking the content, then you take the next step, which is for the final 20, 30 minutes of the hour, you can then edit the Google Doc voice transcription into a blog post. See, now you've got a blog post and maybe a video you could upload. If you don't wanna upload the video, it's okay. But at least now you've got a blog post and you did it with that friend in that one hour. So anyway, I hope this is an inspiring idea for you. Um, if you want to read, again, the step-by-step, -step, please check out the blog post. Uh, it's either above this video or below it, depending on where you're watching this. And give it a try. So here are three motiv motivational ideas for getting into consistent content creation. I hope this helps you. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me, even though I started this video kind of being kind of angry about something that happened earlier to me today. So, um, all right. Take good care. I wish you well. And I will see you in the next video.